this axe right now because I believe that it is a good happy medium for an 18th century style axe to something like this which is the Gransford Brooks it's a little bit smaller head weight the handles a little bit longer but it's definitely heavier than something like the Fort Meigs so it's kind of my compromise I could just easily carry this but if I were trying to go more traditional in style I would carry this and this slides very easily the handles made to slide very easily into my bedroll I don't necessarily need a cover for this because I tuck it right into the fold of my bedroll and through the loops that hold my bedroll together for my tump line but today we're going to make a mask or a cover for this belt axe stay with me guys okay so let's talk about for a minute what we're going to do to make our axe mask I've got a couple pieces of split cowhide here just a natural kind of color and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this for the pocket I'll cut a piece off of this for the welt and we'll talk about that in a few minutes and then we're going to use this for the actual flap when we're done so we'll have a pocket and then we'll have a flap that goes over the top of that pocket so what we need to do is we need to figure out and cut this leather We'll have to sew it up this side and sew it up this side, leaving a hole here to drop it down through the pocket so that it's very similar to this. And you can see how this drops into a pocket. And we're going to have the same thing pretty much here, except instead of having this belt loop, and the thing I don't like about this type pocket for an axe is that you put this on your belt, and if you hit the bottom of this axe on anything, it pops out of the sheath on you. Now you've got an exposed cutting edge that's close to you or that can injure you, and I don't like that. So we're going to make the same similar setup for this, except we're going to have a flap that comes over the top of this so that there's no way it can slip out of there on us if we were to bump into it on something. And I don't know that I'm even going to put a belt loop on it at all. I may, I may not. We'll see how much leather we've got left over. So I'm just kind of sizing this thing up. It's always better to measure this thing twice and cut it once. Look at what we need. We're going to put a whelp in here. We'll put a little bit of a curve to this, but not too much. And I can kind of eyeball that in there. So I'm going to come out to about right here with this. Because I have to put a whelp in there, or a welt in there. So we'll come out to about right there with that. And as far as this goes, we'll probably just leave this straight. If we wanted to shape it a little bit, we could come out in here like this, maybe. And then we've got to leave ourselves enough room here that we're not going to sew, obviously. And here for the handle to go down inside of. And then come out to here. And then across the top here. And if we come across here like this. And I'm just using a china marker for this something that will wipe off later that's going to give me about what I'm looking for in the pouch itself and we'll cut this out here and we'll cut this out here and we'll sew this and that's going to give us that and then we'll do that on both sides of this and we'll go ahead and leave this flap on we'll cut this straight off so let's take our scissors and cut that off first and I'm using, this is a pair of 18th century scissors. I've also got a pair of heavy duty um, shears here. So you could use either one, but you're gonna need something pretty heavy if you're gonna cut leather. So we're gonna cut this first piece and this is what we're gonna use for our pattern for our second piece. And I don't really have to get this fancy with the cutouts and all of those kind of things, to be honest with you. I'm just doing it to make it look a little bit better and make it fit a little bit neater. So we've got this part right here that our handle will come through and the rest of that will be sewn. Now we can take this and kind of round this off just a little bit more right here if we want to, just to give it a little bit more character not going to hurt anything if we do that and we can do the same thing here just kind of round this off just a little bit 
it'll be easier for us to sew it that way as well okay well, that's going to be the front now our whelp we can cut out of this extra piece that we had or we could actually cut it straight out of this piece just laying it on top here like this and drawing it like this and that's where our welt's going to need to be anyway is right in there but I think I want my welt to come down actually that's not going to be too bad if I went right there with it so we could use that piece there for our welt just cut that out And we'll sew that in underneath here, like this. Okay? Now, let's set this aside because this could make a belt loop. If we decide we're going to make a belt loop out of that, we can use this piece of cowhide for that. So we'll set that aside for a minute. And let's look at this piece here. This is going to be our top. I'll set my weld aside for a minute. Come all the way over here so I'm not wasting anything this way. Or if I am wasting something, I'm wasting a big, I've got a bigger piece left over, I should say. And I'm just going to draw this around here like this. Exactly the same. Now, I'm not going to cut this line at the top. It's just going to give me an idea. I'm going to sew up to just a spot of it here. I'll probably sew it up to about right here just so it'll fit inside maybe a little bit further over than that maybe right there and then we're going to sew this all the way around here into here and then from this back side here we're going to sew it all the way around here okay so again we're not going to cut this because we're going to use that for a flap but we can go ahead and cut this part off here that we'll darken this line up one more time right here just to make sure we can see what we're cutting right just barely around that corner and then we're going to go ahead and cut this flap wide and just leave it that way for right now just like that and we'll mess with that after the fact let's get our axe pocket made first and then we'll worry about this coming over we'll probably end up doing a straightening that out I could have done that right off the bat and that wouldn't have been a big deal so we'll go ahead and straighten that out now just so we don't have that ugliness sitting there. Okay. So now we've got our cutouts made for what we're going to do here. This is going to sit in here like this, or well. Now we've got to pre-punch some holes in this leather, and. The best way to do that, well, there's a lot of ways that we can do it, but if we just take a piece of wood and set our leather on top of the wood like this, and we're only going to sew part of this at a time. So we'll start back here with this back side and we'll sew this portion up first. You can use just an ice pick, and this is just an old hickory ice pick, like the one we sell on our website, works fine. You can use a forged awl and drill your holes like this if you want to. You can use a nail and just pound it in there. Any sharp object is going to make a hole for you. But you want to pre-punch your holes. And I'm going to start right here in my corner. And I could use an axe for this, but I happen to have a leather mallet or a leather mallet, so I'm going to use a leather mallet. And I'm just going to punch the hole in there like that, wiggle it around and pull it out. And I'm going to try to evenly space them up the line here. 
Now I could also use a wheel punch for this. And I do have one of those. And that looks like this. Which is just a steel punch that has different size attachments for it to make different size holes. And I could use this to cut the holes in there if I wanted to as well. But you almost have to cut one piece of leather at a time that way. And sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's bad. I don't think this takes too long. So I generally do it this way. This gives me a nice round hole. Easy to, easy to space them out. Nothing difficult about it. Just takes a little patience. And if you're a little bit off, by no means is it a big deal. The other thing you have to think about when you're doing this kind of thing, this last hole in here real quick, is the materials that you're using to do this with have to match what you're going to do with it. If I'm going to use this thing just in the woods every day and I'm playing around and it doesn't matter, I can use anything to sew this up with. Bank line would be the perfect option because it's going to last forever. So if I want this thing completely bulletproof, I'm going to use bank line. If I decide I'm going to use this thing at any type of a reenactment for the 18th century, being that I have an 18th century axe here, if I decide I'm going to do that, then I'm going to have to use traditional materials to sew this up with, in which case I'm going to use cotton or linen. And this is just undyed cotton thread, canvas type thread for sewing canvas is made of cotton. So that's what I'm going to use today. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about sewing this up. We've got this line running here. We've got to run one little line right here. Let's run that first and then we'll talk about it. Okay, now we can sew this up saddle stitch style. In other words, put a needle on each end of this line and run it this way and then back and this way and then back and saddle stitch it. We can whip stitch it all the way around, which exposes our stitches, or we can go up and come back. Either way will work, but you need to be careful what needle you're using because if you have a cutting edge needle and this needle does not have cutting edges on it, it's rounded. If you're using a cutting edge needle, like one of these other type glover needles that have a cutting edge on them, then you're going to take a chance when you come back through the hole a second time around in cutting your threads. You can see this is very wedge shaped and that will cause you to cut your threads and you don't want that. So if you're going to double stitch this thing in any way, you don't want to use any type of a wedge needle, you want to use a round needle. And you can do this by in your hand, you can hold this thing in your hand and start it that way. Or you can put this thing in a vise and really that depends on your preference and depends on the, the size of the holes you've got in there. If you want to hold this thing in your hand and pull it through every time like this, you can do that. If you want to put it in a vise like this, you can do that as well. Put this thing in a vise, it just makes it a little easier than having to try to hold on to it while you're stitching it. And if you got your hole set pretty well in there like this, it'll go pretty fast for you. If you need to hold on to this thread with something, you can always, whoops, you can always uh, grab a pair of vice grips or a small pair of pliers and do it that way. Now I'm going back through the second time around and that's going to pull those stitches together. It's going to be harder to get it through the second time because you've got double the stitching in there. <clears throat> 